you ever have a traffic jam and you get up to the front and suddenly it lets loose and you're like, there's not even a crash here. What's going on? Why, why did that happen? It's because if traffic flow is high enough, um, the traffic jam will move backwards down the road because the cars are too bunched up. And so you can have an incident that backs up a bunch of cars. That incident clears. The front cars start going. But as more cars arrive at the back and have to slow down, the traffic jam moves backwards down the road. And so the front cars release once they're not bunched up anymore. But the back, new cars keep bunching up. And so what happens is the traffic jam moves backwards down the road until the traffic flow drops. You know, it happens after rush hour or whatever to a sufficient level that you have more cars getting freed at the front than you have joining at the back. And then eventually all the cars end up spaced out enough and you don't have the jam anymore. But that's why you get a traffic jam that seems like it occurred for no reason because before something happened, you know, there could have been a, a car broken down, there could have been someone pulled over, there could have been a crash, whatever. Cars bunched up and then it takes time for those. Think about it, a red light. You don't all set off at the same time. You wait for the car in front of you and they get a few feet away and then you start to accelerate and the guy behind you and all that. Now you have that on a, you know, a quarter mile length scale for a, a car backup. Um, and that traffic jam will move down the road. So you'll get a jam for no reason. This jam is basically happening because there's too many cars on the road at once and everybody slows down. One person taps their brakes, then everybody taps their brakes and you, you get that compression effect of all the cars coming together. That's why, that's why traffic jams happen. The other th reason that traffic jams happen is literally friction because adjacent lanes will have friction based on how fast they're going and how fast cars can merge into them. So up ahead, there's actually a highway merge uh, lane busy lane, or excuse me, a busy exit with a lot of cars coming in. Those cars come in, that slows down the far right lane because the people have to merge into it. And then you have a friction between the lanes. Um, you know, if that right-hand lane has to slow down to say 40 miles an hour because there's cars merging into it, even if there's room in the middle lane, people generally aren't gonna keep going at 70. They're gonna slow down until there's some speed differential that humans are comfortable with between that middle lane and that right lane. And then the leftmost lane, which really has nothing to do with what's going on over there, will then slow down with the middle one. So there's a literal friction between the lanes. And as one lane slows down, it's going to slow down the lanes around it. Um, and, you know, this isn't always true. There are people who are just like dicks who will just, I don't, I don't care if they're stopped, I'm going 60. And that's how you have crashes because people pull out and, and whatever. You don't want too big a differential between the lanes. And so that's just a natural human driving thing uh, that I suspect FSD uh, is not aware of it, but it will naturally do. It won't want, to, even if this lane was totally clear and that lane's going 25, it's not going to go 70 in this lane because um, you just wouldn't do that. That's, that's, a, that's a human nature thing. It's a, it's a risk tolerance thing. It's like this, you know, someone can pull out. You can't be going too much faster than everybody else. And now there, there are people that do that, um, but they shouldn't. They need FSD.